muted. I am going to be recording the class today as we go through it. And um, as we, uh, you'll be able to, to type in questions into the chat if you, um, if you see something that you would like to hear. And you will also be able to, um, you know, as I open up your microphones, answer questions. My goal is in the next, um, give or take, about 30 to 45 minutes is we're going to go in and we're going to design a um, simple bathroom, kind of cover off some of the techniques that you might be uh, able to use um, on your own designs. Um, and at the very least, parallel uh, some of the things that you're going to learn today um, to, uh, you know, into your, your design, um, you know, programs and so on. Uh, what I want to do is um, show you a little bit about the house. And so, first of all, what we've got right here, as you can see, is it's a, you know, large house. Um, it's the actual drawing house tutorial that comes with the program. And the area that I'm going to be focusing on is the bathroom um, that is offered the master. I have gone in and I've stripped out a lot of the information that goes with it. So as we're looking at it inside 3D, um, and this is kind of a top-down view where I've actually removed the um, roof as well as the ceiling, and you can see down into the bathroom right here, this will be the main area that we're going to place in our tub, our shower. We're also going to be placing some cabinetry in there and a small toilet room. Um, you know, the other rooms have already been furnished and, and decorated, et cetera. As I say, I've kind of stripped this information out. So if I come back into the main floor plan and we take a look at the plan, I'm actually going to zoom this area up here as the area to work with. And what you will see is that over the course of the next 30 minutes or so, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using a distinct um, set of modes that will help us to fully detail the plan. When I'm drawing within the soft plan, whether it's going to be a bathroom in this case or other areas within the plan, I draw to the model because if I draw to the model being correct, what it's going to allow us to do is on the back end not only get an accurate three-dimensional rendering, but it's also going to allow us to build a bill of materials from this. And even things like cross-sections or interior elevations in this case are going to be that much more complete. Okay? So as we get ourselves started, you will see that um, I'm going to be using the drawing mode to draw things like those symbols and, and cabinetry. We'll also be touching on today the room mode, which will allow us to go in and place finishes. And then further to that, the interior mode, which will then allow us to actually drill down even deeper and break those room, uh, the components that make up the room mode into individual pieces. So within the drawing mode, um, if I come up to the draw and I select from the ribbon bar symbol, it's going to give me access to all of the symbols that are available. Now, many of you probably reached for the bathroom library right away, and, and that's going to allow you access to a number of um, general symbols, if you will. So a toilet number three as opposed to a Kohler or you know American Standard or other type of manufacturing symbol. And there's, there's no harm in, either using, in using either one. The difference that you'll see me reaching for the manufacturers is not only for the bill of materials, but the level of detail that this 3D model will draw to, and also the accuracy as far as the dimensions are concerned, et cetera. So from this list of library symbols that are here, today I'll be highlighting on using many of the Kohler symbols that are in there. Um, that's not to say that, you know, that we're endorsing just that brand, just that's the, the, the symbols that I'm going to be using today. As I open up the list of manufacturers, all of the symbols will be listed here. And keep in mind, these libraries are fully expandable. So you'll be able to go in and add to these libraries you know, by importing three-dimensional symbols from uh, outside sources, whether it be the manufacturer's website or different you know, various websites that are available you know, through Google, et cetera. So in this case, under the draw symbol and Kohler, um, I'm going to actually focus on beginning to put the bathtub in place and so I can come down underneath either the list of the, the you know, individual baths that are here, okay, or we've got the whirlpools down there. Um, I can begin to just scroll, you know, looking for the symbol by product code that I want to use. Um, in this case here, if I select on a given symbol, you will see that it's going to, you know, give me the three-dimensional preview that is, uh, you know, available there and so in this case I could just continue to scroll and pick the symbol that I want to use for my you know basic design and so you can see here's my list I can also go in and block them out like so 
um, you know, and, and you know, pick from that, that list of symbols that are there. Once I have the, list, the, the symbol that I want to draw, it's just going to then be a two-click process to draw that symbol in. And so in this case here, once I have selected the symbol that I wish to draw, I'll position my cursor into the drawing screen, click the start, move it from the wall into the room, and click. And so in this case here, it actually found that wall, so I'm actually going to move this symbol into the plan. Um, let me put myself in a default mode that, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to edit this symbol and drop it into the actual default mode so that the color schemes are, are you know, more generic um, to what you're used to, to, to seeing. When it drops this symbol in, again, I'll be able to take a look at it inside the 3D. Here it is, and what I'll do is using the, the uh, zoom control, um, I'm going to pick the binoculars, uh, which will allow me to click on a surface and zoom in to take a look at that symbol. Um, so it drops it in, and now in this case, I'll be able to go in and add things like walls and, and, and so on around it, et cetera. But this is the basic you know, symbol that's pulled from the library. The dimensions are as spec'd out by the manufacturer and so on. It will snap to the subfloor automatically for me. And so now I can go ahead and um, you know, continue to detail this out. I'm going to zoom in, and one of the things that you're going to find is all of our symbols are going to snap to the um, surface side of the wall. So in this case, it is the drywall that it's snapping to. So this wall right here, while we see the stud, the drywall is actually hidden. In the case of most tubs, unless we're running green board behind them, we're going to move that to the actual edge of the wall. And so what you're going to see is I'm just simply uh, you know, clicking and, and zooming this in uh, to get it snapped up to the wall for me, okay, so that it, there's no gap between, behind the actual tub itself. Selecting the draw wall, now I'm just going to come in here and let's say select a five inch or five and a half inch partition and I will sketch to draw this in like so. Again, I'm going to select move to move this. I'm going to turn the attach feature off and what that will allow you to do is move something on a plan without it moving the objects that are picked up by the program is being attached. What I mean by that is if I select the move command and the attach features on, watch as I move this wall, it's going to move the tub with it because those two items are now basically attached to the um, to, to you know to one another by the program. So in this case, by turning the attach feature off, I would actually be allowed to move an object, you know, independent of something that's presumed to be attached by the drawing. Um, this is important for moving things like if you're trying to move a wall and the staircase is falling, or in this case, I'm trying to move a wall and leave the bathtub behind so that I don't necessarily need to, um, you know, have that, uh, you know, follow with it. I'm going to do a, what's called a cleanup and a save, and what that's going to do for me is the cleanup goes through and mathematically calculates the drawing for us. What that tells it to do is items are supposed to snap to one another vertically. Um, or in plan view walls, you know, snapping together, it automatically does that for me. And that's just simply hitting control C on the keyboard or hitting the cleanup icon here. The save icon is something you can't hit enough of. You want to be making um, sure that you are saving your drawing as you go forward so that you have backups of this drawing automatically being saved. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm now going to add things like cabinetry and, and so on. So I'm going to quickly just run a dimension between the two walls to take a look at what my dimension is that I'm going to be, you know, calling out there, okay, so that I can then begin to sketch in. Now, there are two things that we can do. We can either go in and, um, you know, uh, if you will, auto cabinet that in, or I can go in and I can also just manually, um, you know, draw the cabinets in that I want to use. And so what I'm doing quickly is I'm just basically setting up or figuring out what my dimensions are for the individual rooms, okay? And so what I'm going to do is beginning with the cabinetry that's down here, I'll simply select the draw and select cabinet. You can also select from manufacturers, or in this case, I'm just going to stick with generic symbols to begin with. And so what I will do is I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to select vanity. When I select the vanity option, it will open up the list of vanity cabinets for me. 
Here I can select, you know, the type, which we've already done, the um, shape, depending on what you're doing. And, and in the kitchen um, webinar that we'll be teaching in a few weeks, we'll get into more of corner vanities and, and, and you know, angles and, and curved and so on. So I'll remain with a standard or square box, if you will. From here, I can then select what the shape is going to be as far as the cabinet is concerned. And so, you know, I'm looking at this, um, my dimension here, okay, so if I come in and I'm going to dimension between this wall and here, just to basically get my, what my rough dimension is going to be, okay, um, in this case I might, you know, actually firm that up to something that's a little, you know, easier to use. Okay, and so now I can go in and, and you know, manually start to call it or draw those dimensions in. So in this case here, using the vanity option, using the standard shape and picking the face layout that I want to use as well as the style. When I select the style, I can pick from any number of different shapes that are there and you'll see the elevation is going to automatically, you know, update accordingly. So I'll go back to the square flat panel that we're using and I'll simply begin by selecting, let's say, a 36 inch cabinet, click the start, click the finish, and you'll see that the cabinet is drawn in automatically for me. Now, if you choose to change that on the fly, simply hitting the backspace key is going to do the undo. So in this case here, now I'll go to the 27 inch cabinet, something a little smaller. Now the 36, and I'll click to insert it. Okay, so I've now added a 27 and a 36 inch cabinet. And so I'm just going to add in the, you know, remaining cabinet on the end. And when I go to click, you'll see obviously visually it's already too large. And so Softplan will actually prompt me, do I want to use the auto cabinet to fill the space? And when I say yes, it will carve out or calculate what that dimension needs to be for that cabinet and draw in the single door. As I come back into my 3D and I come over and take a look, there, are, there is my cabinets that I've been, you know, putting in to this stage. Here is the wall that I drew in for the bathtub on the left hand side. Okay, and so going forward now we can make modifications or edits to the cabinets, to the wall, etc. So in this case here, the wall itself, I'm going to edit this and I'm going to key in a 42 inch wall height simply to drop it down, make it something a little less imposing. I could even go into, you know, maybe a 36 inch wall if I wanted it a little bit shorter and so on. Okay, so that's just a matter of typing in what the dimension is going to be and it's going to, you know, raise that plate height on there for me. Additionally, I may come in and put like a countertop, some sort of marble top on top of that to cap it off. The kitchen cabinets themselves can, or kitchen cabinets, the vanity cabinets themselves can also be modified at this stage. And whether I do it inside the 3D or the 2D, the same changes are being applied one to the other. I will do it here simply because visually you'll see the results or the payoff, you know, relatively quickly. If I right click on the, the run of cabinets that are here, I can then select edit from the pull down menu. And so when I select this, you're going to see by default right now, the cabinet run is what I'm modifying, which is to say the entire run of cabinetry that is there. To begin with, you'll be able to change things like what the finish is going to be like. So in this case, let's say I change it to painted. At this stage now, the cabinets are painted white, the default that's on there, okay, and it's the entire cabinet run. You'll also be able to change what the door or the faceplate is looking like. Right now it's the square panel that I selected as a default. So if I wanted to change it to something else, I could simply change that, let's say, flat panel, and it's going to update the cabinets off, you know, automatically. So again, this time I will go back just to the um, to to the square panel, square flat panel that I had a moment ago. Okay. Uh, moving down, you'll also be able to go in and modify things like what the countertop is doing. So by default right now, we have ourselves the granite, um, you know, uh, countertop that's there. And if I select the um, down arrow key to the next to the finish, I'll be able to then go in and modify what that finish is going to look like. And you can see, I'm just kind of scrolling through hitting the down arrow key and it's picking out or, you know, the first um, nine or so finishes that are already set up and then there are a number of finishes you know beyond that and so once I selected what my finish is going to be look like as far as the countertop 
I can now move down and I can assign things like, you know, what the overhangs are going to be as far as the front and sides uh, and so on. Okay, I'll also be able to go in and add a nosing to the countertop. So by turning that on, I automatically get a bevel to begin with. And from that you know, beveled, I can go in um, to the profile names and select from the different options that are available. These are fully user customizable, which is to say you'll be able to go in and draw in plan view, okay, to scale what this is supposed to look like, what that profile is, just using our shape tools, you know, draws a line and draw, you know, curves and so on. And once you've set up what that profile is going to be and saved it into the profiles library, you'll then be able to extract that onto the um, countertop that's, uh, you know, currently being used here. Um, if your manufacturer can provide those for you in an AutoCAD format, you'll be able to bring that DWG format into SawPlan so it could then be used on the countertop as well. So in this case here, I'll simply select one of the options that's available and it's going to assign that to the counter. Um, that one tended to be a good one as far as showing, you know, visually what we're going to, uh, to be doing. So that's cabinet running countertop. Additionally to this, we'll be able to go into accessories, and from here we can now select things like what the handles are, you know, hardware is going to be on the actual, um, you know, cabinets themselves. So in this case, I'll click one of the pull, pull pipes and have that assigned to the entire run that's there. Right now, we have a um, toe kick that's there, so if I choose to add legs to this instead, that's, you know, as opposed to what we just had a moment ago, I can then also go in and then select what these are going to, to look like. And you'll see that um, as I, you know, zoom this down while editing. So now we've added legs to the underside of the cabinetry as well there. Okay. Um, so that's kind of a, in, a, in a nutshell, just some of the things that you'll be able to modify as far as the, um, the cabinets or the vanities are concerned. Okay, so in this case, I'll simply select OK, and if I come back into the main floor plan, this is my list of showing my cabinets that are there. Now, I'm going to erase this dimension just for right now, and I'm going to come in through miscellaneous and explode and just click on the cabinets. And what you'll see, I mean, this is a little bit off-center, but um, because I put a larger cabinet over here, is I'm going to go in and I'm going to assign uh, or, or add to this a basin and, you know, faucet and so on. And eventually we'll, I can finish the other cabinets and, on the other side. So coming in through the draw option and once again to symbols, okay, you can just use the, the default ones that are in there, uh, you know, automatically. Um, you'll also have the ability to say to use the manufacturer. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to, staying within the Kohler library for right now, um, I'll just scroll down and select this, you know, uh, basin or lavatory right here. And so once I've selected that, and I'll just basically drag this down below the screen, I'm going to click to start, click to finish. Now this symbol here, as I edit this, okay, um, you know, it's going to automatically stack. And that's where the, the cleanup option, if you will, automatically kicks in. It's enabled, so therefore, in the elevation, it's going to stack this so that it properly finds the countertop itself. Okay, if I remove that cleanup, I then can take control over that item wherever I would like to put it. Um, I'm going to now right click on that symbol and just simply move it, okay, so that it's, you know, because it's snapped to the back wall here, just to give me room in order to place, you know, um, some faucets in behind. And so again, now using the uh, draw symbol, I'm going to select faucets, and from this list of faucet symbols that are here, I could just, you know, scroll down looking for the symbol that I'd like to use, and let's say it's just some, something simple like so, click to start, and click to finish. And so as I, you know, once again view the 3D, we can see, you know, there's our cabinetry, you know, at this stage, the vanity, uh, you know, centered in under this list of, of vanities that are here. Um, we've got our countertop, we've got our, our, you know, all of our hardware set up. And so inside the, um, the, uh, the model, I'm going to save this. I'm going to do the same thing just over here. So um, I'm just going to draw a little bit, maybe talk a little bit less, okay, as far as this goes. And so I will simply come in through draw and cabinet, vanity, 
Um, we're going to go with the 36. I'm going to, you know, click to, to basically draw that in roughly in the center this time. And I could dimension that in, or in this case, I've just used the move command to get it automatically, you know, kind of dimensioning into place as I go. And then I will select the um, vanity. This time over here, uh, I'm going to select, you know, the 18 inch single door, click to start. I'll say yes to auto fitting it and yes to automatically fitting that in there. Again, I'll hit just explode this up and then what I'm going to do this time just to save myself some time is using the draw select tool I will pick the basin that I drew and click to draw it in and have it snap you know in here once again draw select this time I will pick the faucet and click to start and click to place it and that's just a quick way to be able to pull items that are already done on the drawing um, because it's already existing there I can now zoom around and I can see you know what my um, you know vanities are is looking like and then at this stage I can simply edit this um, you know on the fly once again so um, right click edit and we're just going to change this to a painted finish um, under the countertop we had done Oh, because I've exploded that, let's go back and just rejoin this so that I can edit this entire thing as one run. And so what you'll see is you see kind of the, the that's it, once it's been, you know, cleaned up, now under the cabinet run I'll be able to go in and modify all of them at one time as opposed to just an individual cabinet. And so, again, that's going to stay the same. We're going to, you know, pick the finish that we're using on the countertop and while we're here we'll add that same nosing that we used just a moment ago on there under the accessories is where we went in and selected the pull pipe again I'm doing all this from the plan view this time and simply adding the legs that we want to use as opposed to the um, kick plate that was there and so as I come into the 3D this is going to update for me automatically okay so that in a nutshell gets us I'm going to, you know, pop this or zoom this up, okay, and we're dealing with this area right here. So using the zoom to surface, I'm going to just zoom that up, and you can see at this stage we've got ourselves the vanities in, this one's centered, this one a little bit off, you know, space to give more area there to maybe place towels and so on. And then we've got our bathtub in, and we've got our knee wall right here. Now, on the knee wall itself, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to freeform sketch in a counter kind of a top on there at this stage, so it's not just a wall. And so this is going to be done under the cabinet options once again. So selecting draw and cabinet, I'm just going to come in and at this stage I'll simply just select that I want to, you know, um, draw a countertop in. So you can see me highlighting it on the, the pull down menu there. I am doing this a little bit by eye, although you could certainly dimension this in. So I'm just going to sketch the rough perimeter of where I would like that counter to be placed. I can edit this counter and I can then modify, you know, what the offset is going to be. Because it will clean up to a default, I'm going to remove it from cleanup, okay, as far as that option is concerned. And I will assign it the same material as what we've been using, you know, on the, um, the actual countertops themselves, okay. And so, in this case here, would I use... Um, Corion and DuPont Corion. Now the corner is a little bit sharp, so one thing that you can do when you, you know, if you're putting your freeform counters in, and again, I didn't dimension them and so on, but using the tools option, you'll be able to come in. And in this case, I'm going to use just the curved fillet. And basically, the curved fillet. Once you selected it under tools, curved fillet, you can then I'll zoom this up so you can hopefully see the highlight. Click on each of the two lines that meet to create that sharp corner. And so in this case, I'm just going to type in four inches and you can see I've curved that corner off. And I'll do the same thing over here. So it's just kind of creating that there. So it's kind of a nice little curve. So that's, you know, it. we've quickly gone in and we've added the counters, or sorry, the vanities with the counters. We've added this freeform counter in here. We've got a bathtub in. And the next place that I want to go is we're going to create a shower. Now. A lot of you may be accustomed to coming in to draw and symbol, and you, if you do a search on shower, okay, you, you kind of get into, 
um, you know the pre the, the you know pre done ones that are that are here already pre manufactured ones. And what I want to do is show you how you can create a wall type quickly to create a, a glass enclosure type shower. All right, so that's what we're going to go for. So um, I will save what we've done, and I'm going to come in through File and Drawing Options and Drawing Options. And from the Define Wall, I'll select Edit. So it's just File, Drawing Options, Define Wall, and Edit. And this is access into all of your walls that are available within the plan. And one of the ones that's not in there is a glass shower wall. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and select New to create this wall that we're going to use. Okay, and I'll just simply call it Glass Shower and select OK. And so once that's you know, been defined, the first thing you can do is set up things like what the wall heights are going to be, um, you know, as far as what the default is and so on. And you can always modify that after you put it out to the drawing. So it's not really a big deal at this stage um, that whether I put it in at 7 feet, 8 feet, 9 feet, because I can modify it. I'm going to change the material, however. The default is Adobe Brick. That just happens to be the one that is the first one alphabetically. And so when I select Glass, okay, um, that's going to give me that, you know, uh, you know, obviously different listing for bill of materials and the ability to make it transparent or even, you know, visible. And now I'll just simply come in and type in what the thickness is going to be. So in this case, I've just made it a quarter inch. There's my height. It's not really fixed or bearing, so we're just going to leave that alone. But I could come over here and if I wanted to, you know, texture this um, a different color just so that it, you know, it stands out um, from the other you know, walls that are that we're, we've been using. And so I will do this, and I'm even going to texture, change the texture pattern to a thickened line. And what that will do is allow that to stand out on the drawing for me. Because it is a very, very thin wall that, that we're putting in there. I've not defined it to have a curve or anything along that line. It's just something that, um, you know, will we'll depict the glass. And so I'll click OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, come in and, and basically place in a, a cold or shower bottom, if you will. Then I'm going to put the glass around on. Then we're going to add a glass door. And then we'll, we'll maybe tile that back, the, you know, the surround of the, uh, of the shower. Okay? And so you selecting draw and symbol, um, I'm going to come back down into the manufacturer. And uh, again, I'm just going to go to the Kohler in this case. And I'm going to select showers. And so we've got a, a host of predefined ones that are in there, you know, the, the pre-manufacturers. And then you can get down into the listing of, you know, shower base bottoms, if you will. So something like that. And I'm just going to click to start and click to finish to drop that in. And I'll show you what it looks like, okay, as, we, as I zoom around inside the 3D model. Okay, so here we have kind of basically that, that base that's going to be there. Inside the floor plan, once again now, I can come right click and select wall. And my glass shower wall is going to be, you know, the last one in the list that I just defined. And so when I select this, I will, you know, click the start. And I'm just basically going to, you know, trace the outline of what this, um, you know, base looks like for right now. Now I'll worry about the curb, you know, in just a second that, you know, needs to go on there. But what you can see is the glass shower wall is being depicted here. Okay, and so it is, you know, going in at the, um, you know, predefined height of eight feet right now. There's the, the, you know, the wall type, et cetera. Again, we can worry about putting a, you know, some sort of a, a tile curb or so on in there in just a second. Okay, so once I have done this, I'm going to come in through draw an opening, and under the list of interior openings, you will find that we actually do have, you know. Um, glass shower doors that we could, you know, drop in here. And so let me just, uh, or there it is, shower doors. And I'm just going to select this 32 by 80 glass door, OK? And so once I position this where I'd like to draw it, I'm going to click and have it drawn in. And it's going to drop that door in there automatically for me. Um, I'm going to, you know, zoom this down just a little bit and get a little bit closer. And so on this door to begin with, if I do an edit on this door, I can come in and change the hinge side if I want it one side or the other. So in this case, reversing the hinge side, which would flip it to the other side. I would also be able to go in and manually change what the offset of that is going to be. Um, you know, and so in this case here, uh, you know, 
I'm going to actually just manually move it up as opposed to editing it in plan. I'm not sure what that height is right now, um, but let's go ahead and move bottom of wall to bottom of opening, let's say four inches, and push it up. And I just happened to guess right, so it you know nailed it as far as that goes. <clears throat> okay, so that's my glass door, my glass shower door that's in there. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not going to have this door open in the model for right now, so I will close it so it closes the door off. And so the next thing I want to do is just go ahead and place in kind of a, a curb that's going to run around here. Now, there's a couple of things we could do. One, I could just go in and, um, you know, define another wall that's going to, you know, set up for that curb. Or the second thing that I'm going to do, and this is just based on looking at it from a 3D perspective, okay, trying to open up as many tools to you as possible in this, you know, brief 45 minutes that we can do this. I'm going to select draw, and I'm actually going to use a solid this time. And I'm going to use the, um, the polygon 3D or the cube, one of the two. That's, a, that's going to be up to me. But what it will allow me to do is just draw a three-dimensional shape into the plan I can then assign a surface to. Please understand, if you do it this way, you can't assign a bill of materials, but it is a quick way to get something done, um, and, and so that's why I'm doing it. And I'm just going to basically come in, and I'm clicking and tracing a what you would, you know, basically a little polygon shape that can then be edited and given a height, um, you know, as far as the drawing is concerned. So I'm going to edit this wall and just see it's offset up one foot two inches as far as the floor system is concerned. So I'll edit the 3D polygon, and I'm going to give it that same offset of 1 foot 2 inches to sit on top of the floor, okay? And then the height, I'm going to give it um, at 3.75 inches, which, whoops, which should just put it below the um, top of the, uh, you know, shower base that we've got there. And so this is just a three-dimensional shape. Okay, that I have popped in there, which will allow me at some point to add tile to it. All right, so just kind of for finishing that off. So um, hopefully that will, you know, what you, you fully understand what I was doing there, and, and that, that makes sense. But I'll open this up to questions towards the end. All right, so inside the floor plan now, um, just an overview. We have, you know, constructed a, a custom wall type for the shower. We've put the bathtub together. We've got, you know, a run of vanities that are in here, a knee wall with a cabinet sitting on top of it. And so now we're heading towards finishes and so on. Uh, one last thing that I'll probably, you know, let's just do this. I'm just going to grab and drop a commode or toilet symbol in there so that if we go in, we can see that. Okay. The next thing that um, I'm going to do is actually add finishes to this. And so I'm going to, uh, you know, zoom myself up. And this is the rooms that we're working in. And of course, all we can see right now are things like subfloors, et cetera. Let's focus on the toilet room for one second because it's a small room that's there. And so um, if I come into the main floor plan of this room right here, and I'm actually going to change into the interior mode and just remove you know, any kind of finishes that are in there. And so we can see it's just drywall, subfloor, toilet symbol. You can draw within both the 2D and the 3D in this case. So if you come in through, I'll do it inside the main floor plan, in through room mode, I will be able to come in and select that I want to draw a room. And from the list of rooms, I can scroll down and select that I want a toilet symbol, okay, or polygon. And once I've selected that, I'm going to click to auto trace. Now, when it drops that room in, just as you see the other rooms are shaded, you'll be able to edit that room and from that list, and of course, there's a whole host of rooms that are you know, in this plan already, so whether you're talking about the toilet room we just added or any one of the bathrooms, family rooms, et cetera, but all of these rooms will then be able to have a paint color assigned, okay, a type of baseboard assigned, so you see colonials being used. There is no chair rail inside the toilet room crown molding. Let's just say hypothetically we wanted to. I would simply put a check mark in there and would assign a crown mold to that room now. Okay, the flooring is going to be ceramic in nature. Again, I could select the down arrow key and pick what that material is going to be. Okay, and then finally ceiling is going to be painted. And so when I come back into the 3D, 
there's the tile, here's the wall colors that's going to be used, there's the crown molding. I have manually turned off ceiling at this stage so that it doesn't show up, but you can see the crown mold, which is a wood color in here. Now, let's just assume I want that white like the rest of the room. In this case, I would simply use Edit, Surface Copy Paste, and I can pick either the white of the door or the white of the baseboard, and then I'm just going to assign that to that crown mold, okay? So using the room, draw, you could just literally click in room by room and place it as you go. Um, I can do the same thing as far as the bathroom is concerned, but I want to, um, and I know we, got a, we just got a couple minutes uh, late start, um, so uh, bear with me. I'm just going to run probably just a, three or four more minutes to finish this out. But rather than using the room mode and drawing in all of the, you know, everything, I could break up um, colors or material assignments on a per wall basis if I take the time to draw it in instead of using just room mode, which allows me to, you know, globally do one room and it's very quick, but instead come in through interior mode and draw my interiors one at a time. Now, that's going to take a little more time, obviously, but it gives you greater flexibility. Okay, so what I can do is I could select wall covering, for example, and paint number nine, let's say. I select that and I pick manually tracing it. Now what I could do is I could come in and I could, I'm, I'm going to leave this as, uh, in just a second, this tile. So I'm going to click to start, click to finish, run it to here and click and then right click. And what that did is it actually is now going to assign a different color paint here than these walls over here, which is just standard drywall, okay? Because I've just drawn it on these two walls, and in fact, you can see at the shower, it actually stops right here where I stopped the trace. So if I were to come back into the main floor plan, and I know I'm, I'm going relatively fast on this, but just trying to get everything done, okay? If I come in through, let's say, wall covering, and this time I'm going to use just stone tile number one, okay? And I'm going to come in using the um, manually tracing stone tile number one. And I'm just going to click to start, click to finish, or change direction, and click. And then I'm going to right click. And so now, in this case, if I go back to the front view, I actually get the stone material or backsplash that I've chosen to put in there around the shower. And that's how you can break it up, auto trace. All the room walls in the room are going to be the same. Manually tracing through interior mode is going to give you that flexibility to do what you're doing. So using the draw select tool, I'm going to click and manually trace that same stone tile, let's say here and here and along here. So we're just kind of surrounding the, um, you know, the, the shower symbol, right? And then I could paint the rest of the room you know, like so, you know, with the same paint color that we've used, you know, elsewhere. So draw select, pick this color, manually trace, and again, this time I'll just trace around the walls that I want to paint and stop. Okay, and so I'm going to save that. Again, you can also, you know, now go in, and this is where I could, you know, begin to use things like room mode if I wanted to, you know, um, add things like, you know, the ceiling, et cetera. But just playing this all the way out, if I come in through floor covering, um, in this case, and I'm just going to pick ceramic tile, and I'm going to pick the auto trace this time, and I'm just going to, you know, click to add that, and it's going to go ahead and place all of that in there for me. The same thing with baseboard. You could come in and, you know, manually or auto trace where you want it to be, and so if we're not looking to trace around, um, you know, we're, we're just looking to run to, you know, cab around cabinets, but not around the, the actual stone tile that's going to be used. Then you can see I'm just simply tracing where I want my, you know, um, baseboard to go so that when I'm looking at it, I'm now getting, you know, baseboard in on certain walls, like over here and here, but I'm not putting it around my stone tile. There's the ceramic tile I just put in. And so now what I could do is I could certainly, you know, copy and paste that to the, um, the, to the actual uh, curb that we, that we put in there. And so I'm just going to zoom this up inside drawing mode and make sure that my curb is just actually just outside that glass um, where it's supposed to be. And now 
I can do a surface copy paste and pick this and place it on place it on my on my uh, my actual curb so surface copy paste and we'll just place that on there as well so we get it you know, going around the tub and again I could just move this back in where I want it exactly so I mean we didn't place all of the faucets and so on into um, this, you know, this room that, that, that we're designing over here. Um, you know, so the, the shower ones, you would draw them much the same way. The last thing that I want to show you just, you know, quickly would be that you can have the ability to go in and add things like electrical fixtures and, and mirrors and, and such, so on. So I'm going to actually, um, to do this, zoom this up, and I'm going to do it from within the 3D. So I'll simply come in through Draw, Symbol, and I'm going to just do a quick search for mirrors. And so I find the bathroom mirror that's here, and I'm going to place it you know, where I want it to be. And um, I'm just looking through the shower. And then the same thing through draw and electrical. If I come in and I just want to find a vanity bar for, for today, so I might select you know, that I want this, this one right here and I can place that where I want it to go. And these are going to obviously add things like lighting and shadows, et cetera. You know, again, I could do the same thing, and I'm going to do it inside plan, and I'm going to show you why you want to do things like this as far as the 3D is concerned, because if I add a mirror in here, and I'm going to add this using the draw select tool, the vanity uh, bar that's here, and I'm just going to you know, skip around inside the 3D real quick, so I am currently inside the actual textured mode, okay? And so if I um, carry my paint color over, okay? So in this case here, inside options, setup options, and textured, as you start getting into things like this, you'll be able to turn on reflections, and you'll see. Now this is just in, in texture mode, so but you'll the mirror is going to open it up for 3D to a much deeper level of what you can do. Guys, that is, your, that is 45 minutes uh, as quickly as you, I think you can probably run through and explain a, a bathroom. I'd like to open up the microphones um, if I can and just ask if you have any questions about anything that I tried to hit in that you know, um, 45 minute window there. Uh, did all of that make sense and are there any questions on anything that we did as far as designing this bathroom? I have a question. Yes. How did you rejoin your cabinets after exploding them? Uh, just run a cleanup. So okay. if you just select this icon right here or you hit control C, it'll automatically put them back together. So the explode doesn't stay? No, it does not. Okay, thank you. So once, once you, if I use the keyboard shortcut of Control E, which is the same as going miscellaneous, explode, and clicking on them, if I hit Control C or this icon right here, it's going to put them back together. And so I just hit Control C, and it's just going to, to rejoin them as one big run. Anyone Excellent. else? Thank you. Guys, um, I have, as I said at the beginning or the outset, if you missed it, I did record this class. Um, I will be going through and just doing probably a little bit of editing, maybe take out a few ums or, and so on. Um, and we will post this to, uh, to our web page or through our YouTube page um, so that you'll be able to go back and review this. This is the first of eight that we're uh, test running on this, so your feedback is greatly appreciated. Um, if there are things that we can do that will help improve your experience with SoftLand, um, we would love to hear back from you. Otherwise, um, I hope it's been helpful, and uh, have a great weekend. James, have one question. Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. On your knee wall, when you reduced yeah. it down to 42 inches, it appears that it had drywall on top. By default, that the system doesn't do that, correct? How did you get that drywall look on the top of that knee wall? No, by default, it did. Okay, I'll talk yeah, to Tech, because mine doesn't. <laughs> Okay, I actually, I didn't do anything fancy about it, so um, it automatically did that for me. All right, thank you.
James, I have You're another welcome. question. Okay. Um, on that knee wall, when you put your countertop on there, is there not yes. a way to add a nosing to that countertop? Um, at this stage, if so I were to... So they can match the counters. Yeah, yeah, I understand. If I were to edit this and you come in here, right now... Yeah, no, it's it's not actually showing it because um, it'll only do it on the front side and technically this does not have that, that front edge right there. So the answer is no, not at this point. There's probably a way that um, I could, you know, figure out a way to, um, I guess, finagle that, but mm, no, I guess the answer is no, not on, okay, this, not on this exact setting. So anyone else? Okay, guys. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.